okay so we today we will finalize uh, finally we will see that dedekinds and cantor's theory basically are equivalent concepts both will give the same thing before going for this equivalence uh, of dedekind and cantor's theory uh, we will see a few more concepts or the things which can be represented with the help of the cantor's theory like the between any two real numbers there are infinite number of real number and so on and so forth so last time we were discussing about the index is it not and then in this case we have already seen that if if n be a positive integer if uh, alpha is a positive integer and x is any real number x any real number then x is any real number represented by the convergence sequence xn convergence sequence x n uh, of rationals of course of rational convergence sequence rational then x to the power alpha will be represented by the sequence x n to the power alpha which is also convergent one this uh, we seen in case of positive integer if it is negative then we can just divide 1 by x n alpha if alpha is negative integer alpha is a negative integer then we can write x to the power minus say m this we can write as 1 by x to the power m where m is positive so positive integer and also we have seen if alpha is a fractional alpha is fractional p by q where p and q are the rational fraction and in that case the x to the power alpha uh, that is p by q this is the same as qth root of x to the power p where x is taken to be positive all it is defined when q is odd and if q is odd then even this can be defined for x is less than 0 can be defined even for x is if q is odd q is an odd numbers okay and the third case which we are discussing was if alpha is a irrational number let alpha be an irrational number we claim we claim that x to the power alpha will be represented by will be represented by a sequence xn to the power alpha xn to the power alpha where where x where the sequence x n of rational numbers represents the real number x greater than 0. In fact, this is given when x is greater. So, I will re just revise it, but we have already discussed this part when alpha is positive integer and x be any real number which is represented by a convergence sequence xn of the rational then index we are talking about the index the x to the power alpha will be represented by xn to the power alpha and if alpha is negative then we can write say alpha is equal to minus m then we can write it 1 by xm where m is say alpha is equal to minus m 
then in that case x to the power minus m is 1 upon x to the power m just say m is integer and if alpha is a fraction then uh, rational number fractional then x to the power alpha is nothing x to the power p by q we are this is nothing x to the power p and q at root of this when x is positive but if x is negative it can be defined provided the q is an odd number so this for integer and for fractional we have already discussed now let's come to the irrational number so if alpha be an irrational number and let us suppose x be a sequence x be any real number represented by a sequence x n of rational number positive uh, x is positive real number then we claim that x to the power alpha will also be represented will be represented by x n to the power alpha okay that's we want we have our claim so let's see the proof of this okay so proof let's see now since sequence uh, since alpha is a rational number is a irrational number alpha is a rational number so it can be represented it can be represented by the sequence alpha n sequence alpha n of rational numbers by Cantor's theory is it not any sequence convergence sequence of rational number represents either a rational number or a rational number and by so. So, if alpha is a rational number we can identify a sequence alpha n which convergent sequence of alpha n which represents the alpha. So, it can be represented by sequence alpha n of rational numbers convergent sequence. convergent sequence alpha n of rational number that is important ok. Now, alpha n is a convergent sequence. So, it is bounded alpha n converges so it is bounded. So, since alpha n is a, is a convergent sequence of rational so, it is bounded sequence, bounded sequence, it is mean less than some positive number for all n. Therefore, x is fixed. So, we get x to the power alpha n. Let x greater than 0 be any real number real number ok x n be any sequence of real number and so x to the power alpha n x to the power alpha n mod of this is less than equal to a mm -hmm. this I, I sorry this just I wanted to ok alpha b resistance b claim x 2 will be represented by mm -hmm. this you please make the changes ok by x to the power alpha n because we are choosing alpha n is it not for the sequence alpha n of rational number representing the number alpha ok just change please uh, what we are doing is x is any positive number alpha is a rational so corresponding to alpha we are getting a sequence alpha n x is fixed x so x to the power alpha we claim that represented by a sequence x to the power alpha n because x is not going ok represent now here alpha n is a sequence of rational number so it is bounded therefore x to the power alpha n will remain less than equal to a for all n this is true for all n ok for all n and a is for any fixed number is any fixed number now uh, sequence alpha n is a convergent sequence 
so for a given f sign a given a small positive rational number f sign a one can there exist there exist there exist some integer there exist an integer so that such that mod of a alpha n minus alpha n plus r remains less than 1 by q for all n for all values of r 1 to 3 here i am taking f sin l to be 1 by q f sin l to be 1 by q okay so for a given f sin l say 1 by q i am taking such that this less than f sin is it okay now q is any positive number okay now consider consider mod of x alpha n minus x alpha n plus r consider this so take x to the power alpha n plus r outside so what inside we get x to the power alpha n minus alpha n plus r minus 1 is it not okay now this may positive may negative so it is further less than equal to mod of x alpha n plus r into mod x mod alpha n minus alpha n plus r minus 1 okay now this x to the power alpha n as we have seen from here this is do, this one x to the power alpha n is domain is bounded by a for all n so we can take this thing less than equal to a into mod x and mod alpha n minus alpha n plus 1 is less than q because this is convergent so it's less than equal by q so it is 1 by q minus 1 okay is it okay and this is strictly so we can say this is strictly less than this okay now this can be written as i will write like this is x to the power 1 by q into the if i put it this way a x minus 1 divide by uh, so okay so let x is greater than 1 let x is greater than 1 then we can write this modular sign uh, x to the power 1 by q is greater than 1 so modular sign is removed now i am multiplying the denominator and numerator by this number x to the power 1 by q 1 plus x to the power 1 by q plus x to the power 2 by q up to x to the power q minus by q so when you multiply this we are getting basically this sign x to the power 1 by q minus 1 when you multiply this by 1 plus x to the power 1 by q plus x to the power 2 by q and so on plus x to the power q minus 1 by q then this is the expansion of 1 minus x minus 1 x is greater than 1 okay because it can be written x x to the because this is equivalent to x to the power 1 by q q minus 1 so x to the power n minus 1 you just apply that uh, by no expansion you will get this thing so what i did it i multiply the numerator and denominator by this term x is choosing to be greater than 1 so this sign modulus is removed then no problem and we get x minus 1 over this now since x is greater than 1 so each of this term in the denominator is greater than 1 x to the power 1 by q is greater than 1 x to the power 2 by q is also greater than 1 so total value is q so basically this less than this is less than a x minus 1 by q 
is it okay now if i choose epsilon choose b1 this whole thing to be less than epsilon is it not to show this is a convergent sequence we wanted this to be less than epsilon so if i choose q greater than a x minus 1 by epsilon then what happened this entire thing less than it then then this entire thing mod of x alpha n minus x alpha n plus r this remains less than epsilon r for all r 1 to 3 and so on because you just see when you put it less than epsilon r the q is greater than this number okay so this one we wanted this to be so what this shows this shows that if x to the power alpha n is a sequence of real numbers okay this sequence then it satisfies the condition of the convergence because the difference between any two arbitrary term of the sequence remains less than epsilon r. so x to the power alpha n minus x to the power alpha n plus 1 is less than this now this shows this implies this implies the sequence x to the power alpha n is a convergent sequence okay b say b represent this thing b represent it by x to the power alpha okay x to the power alpha for x greater than 1 and alpha is a irrational point is it okay now if alpha if x is lying between 0 and 1 then x to the power alpha x n to the power alpha this can be written as or x to the power sorry x to the power alpha n which is equivalent to x to the power is it not this is this can be written as 1 by x to the power alpha n if x lying between 0 and 1 then 1 by x greater than 1 is it not so if we consider this sequence then um, can be written as this uh, no no uh, x to the power alpha is uh, this for x lying with now consider consider 1 by x to the power alpha n okay this is nothing but sequence 1 by x to the power alpha n where 1 by x is greater than 1 so as by the previous here so by previous discussion or previous discussion this implies the sequence 1 by x to the power alpha n is a convergent sequence now if x is 1 then x to the power alpha n this sequence is equivalent to 1 only okay therefore x to the power x to the power alpha n this sequence represents gents the number real number x to the power alpha for all x greater than 0 ok for all x greater and this will be an irrational number ok so that is what is it ok so this will be an answer. so index can also be justified with the help of Cauchy sequence. Now, the certain properties, in fact, these properties are parallel to our property which we have proved in case of Dedekinds. The property says is between any two real numbers. between any two real numbers there lie there lie an infinite 
their life an infinite number of rational no, number of rational rationals ok between any two real numbers there are infinite rational numbers like rational ok proof is just let us support two real number let a and b are two any two a and b be any two real numbers represented by represented by the sequence say a n and b n by represented by convergence sequences by convergent sequences a n and b n respectively ok and suppose a is greater than b a is greater than b ok. So, now what we have we have a sequence a n a which is represented by convergent sequence a n this means sequence a n is convergent sequence b n is also convergent represent b and a is greater than b. So, now apply the criteria. So, for a given f sin l greater than 0 for given small positive rational number f sin l rational f sin l ok. We can find an integer we can find an integer n such that mod of a n minus a n plus p is less than epsilon mod of b n minus b n plus p is less than epsilon and for p is equal to 1 to 3 and mod of a n plus p uh, and a n plus because a is greater than 1. So, a n plus p minus b n plus p this difference is greater than equal to some positive number delta where delta is a fixed positive rational number. Fixed positive rational number ok. Now, this why we, uh, this is because a n s are convergent this is because b n is convergent this because a is greater than b. So, a is greater than b means for any arbitrary diff terms if you picked up from a and b the difference must be positive. So, there exists some delta some fixed positive such that all the terms of these differences will remain greater than equal to delta. Now, let us because epsilon is very arbitrary small number. So, I can choose the epsilon less than delta ok. So, let let epsilon is less than delta. let epsilon is less than delta which is possible ok that is not a problem ok. Now, let us pick up b rational number x let x and pick up a rational number x x lying between epsilon and delta that is epsilon this is greater than 0 less than x less than delta. Let epsilon be a x be a rational number lying between epsilon and delta ok. Now, consider a sequence consider a sequence a convergent sequence a n minus x a n minus x in which all the terms are 
all the terms are identical are identical with a n minus x. A n is a rational number, x I am choosing to be also a rational number. So, a n minus x is a rational number. Now, we can identify a sequence or we can construct a sequence where each term is a n minus x. Suppose, I take 1, 1 is a rational number. I can construct a sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That is possible. So, a corresponding rational number we can identify this. So, let us take a n minus x as a sequence whose each term is identically equal to a n minus x. Okay? Now, <coughs> this will be n. Okay. Now, consider a n plus p minus a n minus x. Now, from here if you look a n is convergent. So, this condition is satisfied a n minus a n plus p less than epsilon r. It means a n plus p lies between a n minus epsilon r and a n plus epsilon r. So, from here we can say since mod of a n minus a n plus p is less than epsilon r for p equal to 1 to 3. So, basically a n plus p lies between a n minus epsilon r a n plus epsilon r is it not. So, if I want this number say this one then we can say a n plus p is greater than a n minus epsilon r minus of a n minus x just substitute here is it not. So, from here we get this is greater than x minus epsilon r, but x lying between 0 and delta which is greater than epsilon r. So, this is basically a positive. So, this implies that the number a sequence a and p is a convergent sequence which represent the number a. So, this implies the real number a represented by by a convergent sequence a n a n plus p or a n but is ok same each greater than the greater than the real number a n minus x because this is a real number which I am choosing a rational mean real ok is number greater than this. On the other hand consider the difference a n minus x minus b n plus p. Now, this we can write it as a n minus b n plus b n minus b n plus p minus x. Now, a n minus b n and b n plus p. So, what is this a, a n this a n plus p minus a n plus p is greater than equal to delta. So, this will be basically greater than delta after a certain stage this is for after certain stage this is greater than delta. This will be b n minus b n plus 1 lies between minus epsilon r and plus epsilon r. So, I can say b n b n plus a is greater than minus epsilon r that is greater than minus epsilon r and then minus x and then this is minus x. Okay. For after some integer after certain integer n after an integer n suitable integer n can be obtained. Okay. Now, this can be made greater than 0 which is greater than 0 if we choose if x is chosen to be less than delta minus epsilon. If I choose x to be less than delta minus epsilon, because what is it? 
this delta yeah, f sin. So, delta minus f sin l is positive quantity is positive quantity. So, if I take an x any number which is less than delta minus f sin l. So, for that particular less x this term will be greater than 0. Now, this represents the real number a n minus x this represents the real number b. So, what is the real number a n minus x is greater than b. So, this implies that the real number a n minus x is greater than b. So, now what we conclude is that a n minus x this is a real number which is greater than b, but less than a is it not this is a real number which lying between b and a a is greater than b, but x is our choice because one can choose infinite x which satisfy this condition between epsilon and delta we can take infinite number of x which can satisfy this condition. So, as soon as you change is x there are infinite number of real point lying between a and b and in fact these are all rational points these are all rational point because a n a are rational x is also rational. So, and we are taking a sequence corresponding to n minus x itself. So, it is a rational number. So, this so this imply, but x can be chosen arbitrary arbitrary in between epsilon l and delta such that delta minus epsilon l is greater than x. Okay? Therefore, there are infinite infinitely many rational lying lying in between A and B that is proved. Okay. So, the second property is that in between between any two real numbers between any two real numbers between any two real numbers there lie there lie an infinite number of infinite number of irrational number numbers. Okay. So, there are infinite number of proof is very simple just suppose a and b are the two real number real numbers where a is greater than say b. Let us assume, assume v is rational, b is rational. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, if alpha be a irrational number, if alpha be any irrational number. in rational numbers then we can find we can find a positive integer n such that alpha by n is strictly less than a minus b. What happens is this is our number b here is number a. Now, you picked up any in alpha, any irrational number alpha. So, n can be made as large and we can choose as large as possible. So, that alpha by n lies between here, alpha by n lies between this. It means this implies 
that the number the number b plus alpha by n this number is irrational number is it not because alpha is irrational n is integer of course and lying between b and a because it is greater than a b b plus alpha n is greater than b but is less than a because of this ratio so this number lie is a irrational number lying between b and a it means between any two real number we can find out a irrational number now if if b is a irrational because we have assumed one is to be rational if b is irrational then we can find a rational number beta beta we can find a rational number beta which is less than a minus b by this is our b this is a so if b is a irrational number then we can find a rational number between b and a because a and b are the two real numbers these are real this is real between any two real number there are infinite many of irrational points so between a and b one can introduce a irrational number one can identify irrational number beta because between any two real there are infinitely many irrational points are so there exist we can find a beta which is less than a minus so b beta is rational beta is rational which is lying between this so this implies that b plus beta b is what b is irrational so b plus beta is an irrational number and b plus beta is greater than b but less than a is it not because it is less than a minus b so b plus beta is less than a so in between two reals this is real they are real we can identify a irrational point again so therefore this proves the result okay this proves the whole thing that would be is it okay now before going for the limit etc we will see the main uh, things that is mm, the equivalence definition of dedekinds and cantor's okay so let us see equivalence equivalence of the definitions of dedekind and cantor this was the main means we have developed the concept of the real numbers with the help of dedekind cut as well as the concept of the convergence sequence of rational points and this is given by cantor's and the, uh, the cuts given by the dedekind and what we see that these two theory basically are equivalent they give the same set of the real numbers don't give it okay so what is the difference between them if we take the dedekind's theory dedekind's cut here what we do is uh, here quite uh, the uh, b in that kind cuts in that kind of v b consider the entire set of real number consider the entire set of rational numbers entire set of rational numbers and on this set of rational numbers we are introducing the cut is it not then we say a lower class and upper class and that things any rational number which belongs to either lower class or upper class and like this so in that kind 
theory or that kind cuts uh, we consider the entire set of rational number at together at a time okay while in cantor's theory while in cantor's theory the sequences we consider the sequences of rational numbers sequences of rational number out of the set out of the earlier set is it not this set of rational point we picked up the sequence of the rational number and then we said this convergence converges to a real converges to a rational converges to irrational point so this in that kind of we consider at a time all the rational points and put it in the form of the sections curves while in case of this we bring the sequence of the rational numbers and then we uh, we assign the limits to this sequence convergence sequence of rational numbers sometimes rational and irrational so this is the main uh, uh, idea which we uh, they have done uh, however fundamentally they are true however they are equivalent they are equivalent to each other they are equivalent to each other that is for a section of all rational number that is for a section for a section of all rational numbers rational numbers for a section of all rational numbers can be defined can be defined corresponding to an corresponding to any convergence sequence corresponding to any convergence sequence of rational number rational numbers and conversely and conversely a convergence sequence of rational number and conversely a convergence sequence of number can be formed conversely a convergent sequence conversely a convergent sequence of rational number can be formed from any can be formed from any can be formed from any given section of rational number given section of rational numbers given section of rational numbers rational numbers Okay, this is the way. so we can introduce that uh, we can define. Now let's see the proof of this. Mm. Uh, how these two theories are equivalent? So we need the following theorems. First result is the to justify it to justify we have the following results okay the first result is the section corresponding to a convergence sequence to a convergent sequence let us see so let xn be a convergence sequence of rational numbers
of rational numbers let x n be a convergence figure of rational number which defines the real number x. real number x and let a be any rational number and let a be any rational number a be any rational number represented by a sequence a where the all the terms are the same a and consider x minus a now consider consider the real number x minus a represented by by a convergence sequence x n minus a. Let us see this. Okay. So, what we have? We have this concept. Suppose, we have this x here and a is any ratio number here. Okay. The x n we a convergence sequence of ratio number defines the number x. So, x 1 x 2 x n can be obtained here this is x 1 x 2 and so on or it may come from here also x 1 x 2 x n a is a number which is the a itself. So, we do not care for it uh, we do not bother about much. Then x n minus a this is main important thing represented by x minus a. Now, let us see. Now, if this number if x minus a is different from 0 is different from 0. Now, since x minus a is represented by x n minus a which is different from 0. So, either it means what that after a certain stage the all the terms of the sequence will have one sign either it will have a positive or it will have a negative any number if x minus a is different from 0 because this we have seen if x minus a is different from 0 number then either it will be positive number or it will be a negative number is it not. So, the corresponding sequence x n minus a will have only one sign either it will a positive or it will be negative after a certain stage n on board. Okay. Obviously, because x n minus a is represented uh, represent the number x minus which is a convergent this is a convergent sequence. Okay. So, is not then from then from n after some fixed from n after some fixed values of n fixed values of n x n minus a has a fixed sign is it not? So, this is clear because of this has fixed sign uh, that is either positive or negative this sign will be there either positive or negative according to the value of a depends on a whether according to a if a is greater than this or negative otherwise it will be positive on them. So, ok let us suppose let every number a every number a which is such such that x n minus a is positive for n greater than equal to say n naught after certain stage it greater than ok n naught. Now, let us divide let us define classes define classes as follows as follows what we take l is the class of those number a those number a for which a n minus or x n minus a is positive after certain integer after certain integer 
n naught let us put it in the class l okay after certain is there and r we are every number a for which is negative and those numbers a for which for which x n minus a is negative x n minus a negative after certain integer n after certain integer n let us be placed in the class r ok. So, those numbers which are greater than 0 is in the class lower class which are less than 0 in the upper class yes, upper class of so certain integer of this in negative from and after certain integer if there exists in a for which neither of the ok and third case is so let, let us see so this is our uh, what we are we have given the x equal to this sequence convergent so i am taking x1 x2 xn like this i am putting those rational number those number a in the lower class such that after a certain stage the difference between x n minus a is positive. So, these points will come is it not. So, those rational those real numbers for which this is greater than 0 will be put in the lower class while the upper class means a is this suppose I take this number like this. So, a is this number x n x 1 x 2 x n will be this. So, x n minus a will be negative after certain stage. So, those number you are putting to be in the upper class. Now, obviously, this forms a section a this section clearly clearly ok. Uh, achha, in third case what about the a third case is now if if there exist if there exist a rational number a if there exist a rational number a for which neither neither of these cases arise neither of the above cases arise neither of the other case rise then maybe uh, neither of the other case right then x is equal to a equal to a and may be put up and may be put up in any in either of the class ok. Now, we claim this way the section x this will give the corresponding uh, this section corresponding to number x ok. Now, we, this is we claim this will give a section corresponding to x. So, we will see next time the detail for this ok, That's, but it is almost completed just a few minutes ok. Thank you. In fact,